Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome back to The Correct Views. This is Sam I.B. Idiganji reporting for The Media Speaks. Uh, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Please check out my articles and the other articles posted on that site as well. Very cutting-edge news organization. Of course, The Correct Views on Facebook and on Twitter. Um, guys, I'm going to do something that might be a bit of a departure from the liberty movement and what we are supposed to think. One of the great things about the liberty movement is that nobody's really supposed to think anything beyond the fact that you tend to hold the Constitution in very high esteem. Well, I'm going to go ahead and blast Iran. I detest Iran. That doesn't mean that I don't think that our country is deliberately provoking Iran, because I think that we are. However, they are a dreadful, dreadful company, a country. And by that I mean leadership, obviously not your average Iranian. Um, dreadful. Uh, they do something that Israel also does, that also angers me as well. If you live in an area that is in perpetual warfare throughout all of history. And you live with people that don't mind committing suicide in order to kill you. Maybe you should not have anything as volatile as a nuclear power plant. Now, before anybody starts saying that uh, I'm kissing uh, American uh, patriotism and uh, listen. I don't think America needs to have any of these because I think we cut too many corners to run them safely. I don't think they really can even be run safely. I am anti-nuke because anti-nuke is the correct view. Having said that, at least it is human error or human greed or an earthquake that is going to take out a nuclear power plant here has already almost done so many, many times. Add to that the constant bombing and bomb... Look, I live in Ohio, and I am against the poison plant, davis Bessie nuclear power poison plant, that is up north from me. I am against it very, very much. I would be against it even more if Michigan was bombing us all the time. Common sense, people, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, this here is from the Jerusalem Post. Report of blast at Iran nuke facility unconfirmed. They already have had to evacuate an entire town, and they're saying it was due to pollution. Many people think that it was nuclear related. Again, go to the media speaks. It's called Iran nuked, nothing to see here. It's my article goes into uh, a bit more detail on this. Um, now, here we go again. A report claiming that a mysterious blast rocked the Fordow uranium enrichment facility in Iran last week made headlines in Israel on Sunday but remained unverified. I don't know if Israel did this or not. I'm somebody who's going to err on the side of caution and hope that Israel is smart enough to not be Michigan and bomb Ohio. Because if you do that, the poison comes right over in yep. So I'm assuming that Israel has less suicide crazies than Islam does. That I didn't say less crazies, I just said less suicide crazies. However, are there people foolish enough in leadership in uh, Israel to bomb a uranium facility. Kahili, who says that he turned a CIA agent in the 1980s and 90s, cited a source in the security forces protecting Fordo as saying that the blast occurred late last Monday, excuse me, at Fort Al, which is located deep inside a mountain to protect it from aerial attack. It goes on, the blast shook facilities within a radius of three miles. That could be a big uranium blast. 
Security forces have enforced a no traffic radius of 15 miles and the Tehran Calm Highway was shut down for several hours after the blast, the report added. Uranium, I'm not going to look it up. Uranium has a half-life of billions of years, okay? Once you allow uranium into the atmosphere, for all intents and purposes, it never goes away. And it poisons mankind every day accumulatively. That means one plus one plus one plus one and then you don't get poisoned and then another one and then another one. You notice it didn't go down. It just keeps on going. And all of them, they're all here firing, sending off uh, reactions inside your body and every time you get a new particle it's a greater risk of cancer. And we are starting to see some of the most dreadful occurrences in Fukushima already. And now we've got a disaster in Iran because these idiots, idiots, decide they want to build a nuclear power plant. And I don't think it was wise for Israel to do so either. And it brings me back to another thing. This is going to be another long posting. Um, this issues of America sanctioning Iran. Oh, poor Iran. Hey, Iran. One thing that I will say that Israel has over you is they are a little more self-sufficient. If you can process or claim to be able to process what arguably the most dangerous substance on the face of the earth, uranium, into fuel, and you can't even feed yourself without Americans doing so, then you might not be ready to enrich uranium! Stupid, stupid people. And please don't think I'm picking sides on this. Uh, I don't think Israel or uh, Islam at this point can be anything but other than kids crying in the sandbox over whose mommy bought it for them first. Um, learn to live together already, for crying out loud. Um, not that we do much better in America, but I will say we do a little better in America. Uh, not, not, not in glowing terms better, but I mean, uh, better than the, 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 what they have. Um, anonymous hacks U.S. sentencing website in retaliation for Aaron Swartz's death. This is InfoWars. This is wonderful is what this is. The Hacker Collective Anonymous took down a government website for the U.S. Sentencing Commission's USSC.gov late Friday night, citing a line was crossed with the death of Reddit founder and prominent SOPA opponent Aaron Schwartz. Uh, Giselle uh, is going to love this report. <coughs> Giselle, this is for you. ZDNet covers the details in the site in the attack. I'm going to go ahead and read this verbatim. By 3 a.m. PST, USSC.gov was, was down. It has since been dropped from the DNS. Yet as of this writing, the IP address 66.153.19.162 still returns the defaced site's content. It appears that via the U.S. government website, Anonymous had distributed encrypted government files and left a statement on the website that de-encryption keys would publicly be released, thus releasing the as-yet-unknown information held in the stolen files. If the U.S. government did not comply with Anonymous's ultimatum demands for legal reform, have I mentioned that this makes me extremely happy? Dubbed uh, Operation Last Resort, Anonymous targeted the sentencing entity to draw attention to the harsh justice, quote unquote, dealt to Schwartz by the feds for systematically downloading academic papers. This is absolutely wonderful. I hope that they get exactly what they want. Information hostage. You know what? I'm sick of being hostage to the people that would do something like this to Aaron Schwartz when what he was doing was being a patriot. God bless it. Love it. Um, I want to go one more InfoWars article right here really, really quick. It is uh, Democrats Crank Up Death Panel Talk Following Obama Win. Now, this is dated a bit, January 1st, and I kept meaning to get to it, and it's time to do so. It is time very much to do so. Uh, eugenics, a watch, if you will. 
Um, for those of you that do not know, uh, this show has a very, very big interest in finding out just how deep the uh, roots of eugenics go into this country, especially modern times. And um, I'm not one of the people that go out and I'm automatically assume I know what everybody means. There is a side that says that Bill Gates, for instance, is not a eugenicist. He was speaking of people having less children once their quality of living goes up. So I have an open letter to Bill Gates sitting at the Media Speaks, just waiting for him to clarify this statement, because there's a lot of people that would like to know exactly what he meant by it. And if you don't know, eugenics is the belief that there are elite, and that these elite are better off without you and I, the useless eaters, the unwashed masses, um, they would like to do away with us. Well, this lends some credence to it. Now that Obama has secured another four years in the White House, it is time for the administration to crank out more Obamacare propaganda, specifically arguments about the cost-effectiveness of keeping old people alive. Might just be cheaper to let him die, huh? Let Granny die so that we can uh, hire more teachers, maybe. Wasn't that the quote? Um, look up what Alex Jones says about um, eugenics being the most important issue for someone who's new to the Patriot movement. Um, go look at Bilderberg, why it mattered to me. Look what Alex has to say about it. Enter the Internet's liberal bellwether salon.com. Earlier today, the website posted an article by Matthew Iglesias, a blogger and Democrat operative who spent time on the Soros project Think Progress. According to Iglesias, old folks are the key issue in the federal budget, and their welfare accounts for the remarkable lack of apparent cost effectiveness in the American healthcare system. Want some more scariness? Scariness incoming. When the patient is already over 80, a simple fact of the matter is that no amount of treatment is going to work miracles in terms of life expectancy or quality of life, he writes. He offers a chart where he proves this, that it's not financially worth it. Again, I'm trying to get my graphics up. Why don't I have them? Because I don't have a computer good enough to handle the quality of this camera. And to get a computer, that involves you donating to the show and advertising on the show. So please do, and I'll get them up there. Anyway, <laughs> indeed, the chart reaches its steepest incline between the ages of 80 and 90. For an actuarial-minded, however, the problem begins with those who have crossed the 60-year threshold. In other words, following Mr. Iglesias' logic, if that's what you want to call it, if the government is going to address the remarkable lack of apparent cost-effectiveness in the American healthcare system, steps need to be taken to reduce the cost at the lower end of the curve. Killing Grandma! Sorry, Granny. We can now expect more Democrats to talk about what was herefore unmentionable. Death panels. Iglesias, in fact, uses the phrase in the headline. In September, a top Democratic strategist, Stephen Ratner, said rationing under Obamacare is inevitable. Rationing, for you Usher fans, or you Lady Gaga lovers, that means rationing as in, are you worth it? Because if you're not worth it, you don't get the health care. And since Obamacare is going to make regular health care absolutely unaffordable, even worse than it is now, then what you are going to do is simply die because you are not going to be able to achieve the care that you need. We need death panels, he wrote in the New York Times, much like Adolf Hitler would if he was still alive. Well, maybe not death panels exactly, but unless we start allocating health care resources more prudently, rationing is its proper name. Oh, let's be proper. The exploding cost of Medicare will swamp the federal budget. What Obamacare is doing is moving us closer and closer, one step at a time, over and over and over again, to the belief that there needs to be less of us, less of us poisoning the planet with man-made global warming, which is a lie. Um, less of us doing anything. And the ones who are here are meant to be part of the state so that the elite can have a better life. And if you doubt this, then go ahead and ask them what they mean by medical rationing. Go ahead and try to get a straight answer once. Mm -hmm. Anytime someone can't give you a straight up answer for something, let's face it, you wouldn't buy a car off of them, use the thinking part of your brain. Um, I want to get to this real quick. Telegraph.co.uk 
I avoid abortion on this show. Why? Because my personal belief is that uh, late-term abortions need to go. Uh, Early-term abortions, I'm on the fence with to some degree. I know that's going to anger a lot of you. And I think it needs to be voted on by each state. That is what I believe the Constitution says to do to things that are not outlined in the Constitution. Other people say it's murder and the Constitution already has laws against murder. All right, look at this. We don't talk about abortion because people tend to believe what they believe. And you don't get anywhere. But this I am definitely concerned about. I'm going to go ahead and talk about this because this is nine kinds of wrong. That is the correct view. No ifs, ands, or buts. Doctors seek court order to carry out abortion on mentally disabled woman. The trouble is she doesn't want the abortion. And I know you're saying that we don't need more welfare recipients on the payroll, and if she's MRDD or something, there's a real good chance that that's going to happen. Well, let me tell you, the other thing that we do not need is them deciding who is competent enough to make decisions like this on a government level, because then they're going to decide that you and I aren't sane enough. And then again, we go back to the who gets to have kids, who gets to be uh, euthanized, who gets to be an elitist. Uh, you get it. It's all circular, and then people think you're crazy when you point it out. I'm not making these up. The woman who is not being named for legal reasons suffer from sickle cell disease, which has already caused her to have a string of strokes. The medical team treating her say they are concerned that allowing her pregnancy to continue any further could endanger her life. Of course, that's not up to her now, is it? They describe the situation as urgent and say that they must act quickly to reduce the risk. That risk is up to her. Now, if she wanted an abortion, I would be in favor of her having it. Lawyers from NHS Trust in the south of England are due to take their case to court of protection sitting on the High Court of London later this week. The judge will be asked to make an order allowing doctors to treat the woman without her consent. Treat the woman? Just because I'm not completely against abortion does not mean that I think forced abortion should be called treatment. Goes back to my article I just wrote for the Media Speaks, where you can call uh, an innocent a militant so you can drone him. She is described as having a significant learning impairment, and doctors believe she does not have the capacity to make a decision for herself. Slippery slope, my friends! Sickle cell disease is an inherited condition in which the red blood cells which supply oxygen to the body develop normally. The cells, shaped like crescent sickle, rather than being round, have a tendency to clog sections of blood vessels. So, now, we're going to decide. We're going to move in, and we're going to let the government decide whether or not a risk can be incurred by a patient. This is bad, people. This is bad. If, if someone wants to have a child then they should be allowed to keep the pregnancy that they had. And if she's so mentally impaired that she shouldn't have been by herself to have sex, then that's not her problem. She gets to choose her life, not the state. Theage.com, you know I like to end with these, I always say that. The private firm plans affordable lunar mission. Oh, this is great. It'd make Newt Gingrich very happy. Um... <coughs> A Colorado startup by former NASA managers plans to conduct missions to the moon for about 1.5 billion U.S. dollars per expedition, a fraction of what similar government-run operation would cost. That's affordable. It's still good news. But please don't let some pop star like Justin Timberlake be the first civilian that goes into space. Please. Because, I mean, if there is life up there, they already know we're stupid. Let's not push it. Our vision is to create a reliable and affordable U.S.-based commercial human lunar transportation system. Well, you're failing on the affordable, but you're getting there, I guess. Said former Apollo flight director Jerry Griffin on Thursday, who serves as chairman of the firm named Golden Spike. You need a Golden Spike to be able to afford this. The expeditions would use existing rockets and spacecraft now under development to fly NASA astronauts to the International Space Station. Depending on how many customers sign up, the company said it could be ready to fly its first mission by 2020. It did not elaborate on any existing or pending contracts with customers or suppliers. 
The first mission would require an investment of $7 billion, said Golden Spike, President Alan Stern, NASA's former associate administrator for science. Once established, mission costs would drop to about $1.5 billion to fly two people to the moon for up to two days. Let's hope it happens. It would be wonderful. God bless Golden Spike. I mean, nobody else is doing it, and Obama is uh, destroying NASA, so let's see what else the private sector can do. I'm very much in favor of it. I'm sure you are, too. You probably wouldn't be listening to it. Um, good. Golden Spike. Let's get some people on the moon by 2020. That's awesome. We haven't been up there in ages, and uh, let's face it, there are some people that can afford to do it, and they should have an avenue to do it. I just think that I would like to see... Let's see something like this happen where they say, you know what, it's really affordable for someone to do it. Instead of having to be an absolute billionaire, or literally a billionaire to do it. But, um, hey, let, let's look at it this way. At least the private sector is getting a boost. And it's been a long time since anybody has said anything good about the private sector. You are listening to The Correct Views. Thank you for doing so. I mentioned earlier why I need you to please donate if you can. Advertise on this show. Do you own a small business? Are you doing what I'm doing? Would you like to advertise on here? All money generated to the show gets used for the show. And um, I thank you for listening. Good night, friends. God bless.